Coming up on show 491, Tesla's Powerwall supply looks to be increasing, the Seat Mi and the Corsa E. <laughs> well, those stories, many more. Yeah, packed show today, actually. Lots going on, lots of different things happening today. A bit of energy, a bit of cars, a bit of storage. I love it. I love all the stuff around EVs as well. It's all coming up on EV News Daily. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. In fact, wherever you are in the world, welcome to the show. Tuesday, 4th of June edition. Hello, it's Martin here. I go through every EV story that I can find each day to save you time. I know you're busy and hopefully the 20 minutes we spend together is time well spent. I'll try and keep today under 20 minutes because otherwise it could be a long one today. Plenty going on, like I say. Hey, a quick thanks as always at the start of the show to MyEV. If you're in the USA, uh, you've got access to MyEV.com. It's your electric vehicle marketplace. Uh, I love their homepage. It'll show you the most viewed cars that people are looking for on MyEV. Tesla Model S, no surprise. Nissan Leaf, no surprise. BMW 5 Series plug-in, bit of a surprise. Like I say, it's USA, I'm here in the UK, so maybe people are looking for different things, but very, very interesting. Fabulous. Check out myev.com. Buying and selling and learning about EVs. They're about connecting you to the people that you need in the EV industry. So we're looking forward to Fully Charged this weekend. Oh, by the way, new Patreon supporters signing up in the last 24 hours. Thank you so much. Nigel Miles. Nigel joins us as a new producer. And a massive thank you, Nigel. Also, a huge thank you to Kyle Mayen. Or Mayen, I think it's Mayen. Kyle upped his support to executive producer level. Plus... Charles Hall's gone and done the same thing. Charles Hall moves up to executive producer. Thank you very much. Your names are now appearing every single day in those show notes. Anytime you want to, have a look at a new uh, podcast show notes. You'll see your name in there. So Fully Charged is happening this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I mentioned Patreon before Fully Charged because if you are a Patreon supporter, look, if you're a podcast listener, I would love to see you this weekend. I'm going to be at Fully Charged live on Friday and Saturday. Can't do Sunday because of long-standing family commitments, but I'll be there for two of the three days. A clean energy festival, of course, rooted in EVs and the Fully Charged live channel. It's a fabulous business these days. It all started with Robert Llewellyn making videos and now... It's a great company employing a load of people here in the UK and expanding all the time and now expanding into the live arena, uh, which is brilliant. A great place to go. 30 live sessions, a thousand pounds to be won daily. Uh, you can even win a Hyundai Kona for a year thanks to Drive Electric. You can even test drive the cars this year as well on part of the Silverstone circuit. And I'm sure that like uh, like all good companies sell merch. If you go and see, I don't know, Madonna or someone playing live, you can go get a t-shirt. I'm sure there'll be plenty of fully charged uh, goodies and merch that you can buy when you are there. If you are going to be there early, and I mean 11 o'clock on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, uh, then the keynote starts with Robert talking to different people from the industry. The one at the beginning of the show, though, I think is going to be, it's going to be a packed house. It's going to be with Ben from Rivian. It's 11 o'clock on Friday morning, very first one, and Rivian certainly on fire right now. And I would certainly love to talk to Rivian to find out more I don't know if I'm probably the biggest cheerleader for Rivian because certainly you can't call it vaporware, but there's a big difference between the excitement around the company and they've done an amazing job, Rivian, at getting any you know any time that I mention it, it gets a ton of ton of engagement and comments compared to what they're actually producing, which is nothing. However, there's clearly something because major companies like Amazon are investing mega bucks into them, and they don't do that on a whim. So there's clearly, behind the scenes, a lot going on and a lot to be investing in. Uh, not a lot that we can actually see at the moment, apart from some vehicles which you know they put behind ropes at motor shows and things. You can't actually go and have a little fiddle. So uh, looking forward to all of the things happening at Fully Charged this weekend. Looking forward to hearing from Rivian as well, just to hear what they have to say in person. That's going to be super exciting. I'm trying to plan... I, I, don't, I want to get into the news quickly. I'm trying to plan a time for everyone to, if you want to, if you're a podcast listener, get together and say hi. Uh, I'm thinking Saturday is the more likely day. I, I think it's going to be busier on Saturday. I don't know what time, but if you agree, disagree, let me know. Let me know a time that you think it'd be really good to that I can buy everyone else a posh coffee for you buying me a posh coffee on Patreon. 
So I was on the Model 3 configurator today. We'll kick off with a bit of news about this. I, was, I wasn't I was buying a car, by the way. I was checking prices. Literally, I was checking today's Model 3 prices so that I could be up to date and know what, know what people are talking about. And so I saw on the final page, because I was doing my little dream spec, and not, not that much of a dream. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty humble. I, I'd go standard range plus and just be done with the shorter range. Man, but it is all about range. If you can stump up the extra 10k and get the long range, do it. But standard range plus in black, standard black, aero wheels, all fine. There's a new page. Before you get through to actually paying, there's now a solar and storage page. And that was new compared to the last time I looked. And it says this, produce and store your own clean energy to power your home and charge your car day and nights. And so... Uh, there was an, a, an article that accompanied that story today on Electric. Tesla's been having a tough time ramping up Powerwall production, but now there's more projects in the UK with Powerwalls, like 250 of them being installed by Tonic Energy. Tonic Energy announces they're the first UK energy supplier, uh, well, one of the actual energy suppliers, to offer the Tesla Powerwall. Following a successful pilot program, Tonic Energy say they've commenced rolling out 250 Powerwalls to homes across the UK with installations done by their own in-house team. Big song and dance being made about that. Of course, there are many, many people in the UK accredited and installing power walls one of them is our very own premium partner of the show phil roberts from electric future ef.energy and he's going to have a look at their site and they're doing big commercial installs of solar and things and i've chatted to phil for a long time about the power wall and you know how that's what he does he installs not just them but other storage as well and I checked in with him just before I did this story just to say, is this sounding about right? And he was like, well, yeah, you know, obviously there's, you know, Tesla don't like to share too much and all those kind of things. But from what he could say, yes, supply is becoming more readily ab- available for the Powerwall, one of the things that he does install with uh, Electric Future. Fantastic. So that is good news. If you have a bit of solar or you want some solar, but you want some storage as well, particularly here in the UK, by the way, the government recently scrapped the feed-in tariff. Now, there's feed-in tariffs all around the world, but here in the UK, they just ditched it at, uh, a few weeks ago now. So energy, if you have solar panels, any energy that you produce that goes back into the grid, used to get paid a small amount, but used to get paid a small amount for that going back into the grid. Now you don't. It just goes back to the energy providers for free. You pay for the solar panels and they reap all the benefits, of course, with home storage. You keep that. It's still difficult to make the ROI work on a sensible time frame. Over 20 years, you know, for some people, fine. Others, maybe seven to ten years for businesses it makes so much sense by the way it can be so it can be a few short years and they start getting you start getting your money back you get energy independence resilience things like that so super interesting so uh, that is the first model three story that i had today the second model three story i had came from an email that was sent to me and i won't say who sent the email because he would rather that I didn't say, uh, and, you'll, and you'll work out why, uh, his exact name. Uh, but he forwarded me, uh, he, he said, he said, just don't, you know, don't share anything personal. But he was having a to and fro with Tesla. Now, this is a Patreon supporter of the podcast. He ordered uh, here in the UK, bought a Model 3 on the very first day that they were able to be ordered. And he asked a couple of questions, he asked lots of questions. But the two that I was super interested in was then the performance model here in the UK was reduced in price. And he said, if I upgrade to the performance will i get it sooner or maybe i have to wait for it and also if i do upgrade can i get the tow hitch as in it's one of those nudge nudge wink wink off menu things and so following the conversation uh tesla replied to one of our listeners it would be roughly the same so if you do want to go He'd ordered the long-range all-wheel drive, but if you want to go for the performance model and pay a little bit extra compared to the one that he ordered they say this It would be roughly the same time. We are building an inventory of cars and you'll be matched to one. So that's interesting. So that sounds like they are both building to order for the UK. And reminder, we we get our cars end, we get our Model 3s end of June, beginning of July, but they are building up inventory as well. And that's interesting. So it's not just going to be a shipload of Model 3s on their way to the UK. Could well be sailing already, by the way built to order but also he's this person at tesla says we are building up inventory of cars Mm. 
very interesting. Uh, in re- in reply to the other question about the tow hitch, uh, this is interesting. I'm afraid the tow hitch isn't available per- for, per- for performance cars due to regulatory approval. And that's interesting, because why would a car that can go farther with a bigger battery, and admittedly quicker, not get approval from regulators? So who are they waiting for? Maybe it's regulatory approval in generally in Europe, and they can't make a case for the UK, or maybe it is as well. Anyway, two things from that email chain that I that I did ask permission. Can I pass this on to you? And he did say, yes, just don't say uh, his name. So I won't, but I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you so much. Moving on with the news today and uh, moving away from uh, stories of the Model 3, but generally Tesla-wise, amid reports, uh, amidst reports on Tesla's stock price, which when I had a look a little while ago, uh, I, we were at the beginning of trading in the US, but it was doing okay, up quite a few percent. I'm not a I'm not a stock or a shares holder, uh, but it was doing all right. Uh, however, they've certainly had a real rough and tumble couple of years on the stock price. According to filings by General Motors and Fiat Chrysler, FCA, uh, to the state of Delaware, their agreement with Tesla for greenhouse gas credits was inked on the 25th of February this year. The filings affirmed how established car makers like GM and FCA are relying on Tesla to comply under the United States environmental regulations. Tesla's general generated almost $2 billion in revenue from the sale of credits since 2010 alone. $2 billion just for selling credits. I'll pop a link to IB Times in the show notes. Well, pre-orders for Volkswagen's first production EV are running ahead of schedule. That's according to the VW board member Jürgen Stackmann, who tweeted, Today, the German automaker now has 20,000 pre-bookings for its ID3, the small car that's not a Golf. Don't call it a Golf. Looks like a Golf. Same size as a Golf. Eh, same price as a Golf. Don't call it a Golf! It's an ID3. No, they're getting away from the uh, the old VW. Changing, I th- changing logos as well, I think. Or updating logos. And certainly doing all they can to try and leave the uh, uh, somewhat dubious uh, history of uh, recent times in VW behind them. And an all-new, brighter electric future. This is why they're calling it not the Golf E or the anything like that, but the ID range. Drawing a line under certain things. European order books for the five-door hatchback that isn't a Golf opened one month ago, according to Stackman. And the German automaker was hoping was hoping to reach 30,000 reservations for the car that isn't a Golf by the time of the Frankfurt Motor Show. Well, they open their doors in mid-September. And if there are 20,000 already, you would have to say they're probably going to get to 30,000 by September for the Frankfurt Motor Show. Well, 20,000 reservations for the car that's not a Golf are a drop in the bucket compared to the 400,000 reservations that the Tesla Model 3 claimed upon its introduction. VW's total is still encouraging, though, especially as reservations do require a refundable deposit of €1,000. That's about $1,100, US dollars, about £880, pounds, and $1,600 Aussie dollars. You've got to put your money down. It is refundable, of course, and this isn't even a reservation. This is these these twenty thousand pre bookings for the Not a Golf is simply a right to be further ahead in the queue when the reservations open. I'm going to put a link to CNET in the show notes if you want to read more. Seat, another part of VW, the Spanish part of VW, and somewhat cheaper brand as well, unless you're looking at their performance bit called Cupra. Uh, still, Seat is definitely not the, uh, the the premium, like Skoda, like they're, they're more the uh, cheaper end of what the VW brand makes. They've confirmed they're launching an electric version of its Mi city car, M-I-I. I think it's pronounced Mi. On the autumn of this year, marking the brand's first foray into the zero emissions market, says Motor One. Com. Love Motor One. Offering a provisional range of 161 miles on a single charge from an 82 horsepower motor, it's basically the VW E up. Uh, but this is the say at me. Maybe we should start saying, don't call it the E up. It's the me. It's the little runabout on the same platform as the E up uh, that Sayat says the new model is. Still based on the petrol-powered version of the Mi, and that shares a lot with the City Go, which is also, don't call it an up. Uh, it's, they say, dynamism, urban design, and advanced powertrain means that you can use the car for 161 miles on the WLTP economy. Uh, the charger is a 7.2 kilowatt charger. I'll uh, put a link to Motor One in the show notes if you want to find out more. 
Well, the Hyundai Kona family is growing here in Europe with the introduction of a new hybrid model to join the combustion-powered car and the full electric car. European sales start in August. There's no pricing details yet. The company isn't yet confirming whether the hybrid car will be coming to the US, though, reports Motor1.com. Well, the hybrid setup uses a 1.56 kilowatt hour lithium-ion polymer battery and the only available gearbox is the six-speed dual-clutch transmission. The only way to get energy into to that battery is to put some of that self-charging dino juice in it. Yes, it is a fossil gobbler. I'll pop a link to Motor One in the show notes. Orkney is an island you may not have heard of. If you you if you can imagine a, a a map on a globe, actually, let me update that for 2019 on Google Maps, and you look at the UK, go up, go up a bit, no, keep keep going up up. All right. Up a bit more, you get to Orkney. And a £28.5 million project is aiming to turn the island of Orkney into the UK's first smart energy island. By eliminating the use of all fossil fuels, picks up the website New Civil Engineer. The Reflex project is going to use new energy technology like domestic and commercial scale batteries, vehicle to grid car chargers, electric buses and e-bike schemes, and an industrial scale hydrogen fuel cell. It's hoped the project will eventually eliminate the need for fossil fuels on the island. FlexiGrid software is being deployed to manage the island's renewable energy grid and charge batteries to be installed across the island. And I'm going to put a link in the show notes if you want to find out more. A previous guest of this podcast are called Teva Motors, T-E-V-V-A, and they do trucks and they do range extender trucks because that's their particular technology and business model. They're a British electric truck maker, Teva Motors. They've been on this show before with a guy called David Thackeray, maybe uh, coming up to a year ago, a really fascinating Saturday special. If you are into your things like that, go and have a look on my blog, EV News Daily, and in the search box, type in Teva, T-E-V-V-A, and you'll find that, and it's well worth listening for. It's a pretty much an evergreen interview. We cover off a lot of stuff about why it's so important to electrify trucks, and uh, they've announced today a landmark agreement with Hitachi Capital Vehicle Solutions. What's this all about, Capital Solutions? Well, this is all about money and about having money on tap. They say it's going to open the way forward for fleets to move from being fossil gobblers to electric fleets, according to the commercial director, David Thackeray, who, like I say, had a chat to me last year on the podcast. And according to the website, commercialfleet.org. Well, this deal with Hitachi Capital is it was finalised at the end of last year, but now it's enabling fleet operators that want to make the move to e-trucks and to electric trucks to have exactly the same leasing model because they don't want to have to worry about changing their finance options. So they've got the same leasing options they've long enjoyed with diesel vehicles. It's literally like for like. David said that it represents an important step change for leasing companies, many of whom have been previously unwilling to provide attractive finance deals to customers due to uncertainty around uh, those vehicles. And... Last story today is about a new little city car. Maybe this won't ever be available then in the US, but it looks like a great little city car. It's called the Vauxhall. Well, here in the UK, it's called the Vauxhall Corsa E. Maybe where you're listening, it'll be the Opel Vauxhall. Sorry, the Opel Corsa E. Uh, For the first time, they're offering a purely battery electric vehicle with the new sixth generation Corsa. The Corsa E can now be ordered. It starts in Europe, maybe somewhere like Germany, if you're listening. I've got lots of German listeners, I can see on my stats. €29,900 for the start of that car. Delivery starting spring next year, says the industry website Electrive. Well, the basic version is in Germany, at least in Europe, it's going to be called the selection version. It makes the entry price at 29900 Move up to the addition for 30,650. And then there is a 32,900 euro version uh, called the first edition. There's also leasing there for 299 euros a month, which is pretty attractive. Here in the UK, I had a look. Of course, you have to factor in that we get the PICG, the plug in car grant from the government. Free cash, nothing to do with taxes or anything like that. It's just free money off a car. Well, off a pure electric car or a hybrid that can do insanely long miles that none of them actually tick the box. Therefore, it's basically de facto all electric cars. On the road cash price here in the UK of the base model is £27,140. A lot of money. 
I was going to say but. I, it's a lot of money. I can't deny that. For a car with a 50 kilowatt hour battery that does 205 miles on the WLTP range, that is for the Corsa E Elite NAV spec. 17 inch diamond cut alloy wheels, 10 inch color screen, 11 kilowatt three phase charger if you want it on that. We wouldn't spec that here in the UK because we don't have three phase domestic electricity. In Europe, it's going to be very interesting how many people go for the 11 kilowatt onboard charger on the three phase charger. Uh, here, I imagine in the UK, there would be a single phase 7 kilowatt onboard charger. Vauxhall, I, I sort of did the order form. I clicked through, I looked at the finance. They say, as soon as we're ready to start taking orders, your selected retailer will be in touch to arrange an appointment so you can place your full order on the Corsa E. So that tells me that they're still very much using their dealer network all around the UK, possibly around Europe as well. As some car manufacturers are looking to go for a D to C model, sorry, a, a direct to consumer model. You know, like how everything, there's so many things these days that you can do direct. So there's really interesting businesses cropping up in like razors there's a company called harry's razors they've kind of i think they've either, either sold out or merged or or they've done very well but they're in direct so you literally buy from them direct you haven't got to go to the supermarket or you haven't got to go to amazon to buy you literally a lot of companies now a lot of very successful startups are doing a direct to consumer model and more car companies want to do exactly what Tesla do. Tesla, by the way, is a D2C model. Uh, they don't sell to uh, other businesses, aka franchised dealers, who then buy their cars off them, put them on their lot, and then have to do whatever they can to get shot of them. The car makers don't mind. They've, they've sold them to their franchise dealers. They're off their hands. That's a sale, right? But then the dealers have to do all sorts of shenanigans on price and and chucking in free car mats to get you to buy the darn things so tesla is that direct model of course you get loads of first party data on your customers get a direct relationship with them as well you can sell to them again upsell them and more and more car makers are heading towards a direct to customer model because it makes sense in a in a in a, in a 2020s business however however this is not good if you also have a bunch of your own dealers, like uh, retail dealerships that you've built, and a bunch of franchise dealers that you've got contracts with. That's a bit of a minefield. So that's the news today. I've waffled on way too much. Look, over 20 minutes. Thank you for bearing with me. Question of the week this week, thanks to myev.com. Keep your comments coming in. As EVs get more popular, should EVs still qualify for special treatment and incentives? Financial incentives? Convenience incentives like driving in bus lanes or free parking. Should EVs still qualify for special treatment? Let me know. Email me. Hello at evnewsdaily.com. It's my personal email. Hello at evnewsdaily.com. And if you want to, you can leave a comment on Facebook and YouTube. Also, get in touch as well if you're going to be at Fully Charged this weekend. You can arrange some sort of meetup. Well, thank you very much to 214 patrons of this podcast, whose generosity means I get to keep making this show. Got a biggie to mention. Maybe tomorrow I'm just chatting on email to them about what they want me to say uh, because we have a new premium partner joining the show and I want to get it right. And so there's no hurry. Uh, hopefully it's uh, it's something that we can you know build on together and it's always great to have another business sign up and uh, be part of the Patreon gang. So thank you so much. If you want to get any previous shows, you can do. Uh, there are 490 of them in the archive. The new ones come every day. Hit subscribe in your podcast app or on YouTube to get them first and free and automatically. Every so often I ask you to do a little review and today's one of those days. Please do a review. It's uh, social proof. People see what you've written and you know, hopefully, you know, one star, five star, give it whatever you think this podcast deserves and people see it and go, you know what, I'll give that a go. And that's, it, it, I think it kind of helps a little bit with things like Apple Podcasts and that. But mainly it's so that other people see your review and go, oh, I'll try that. If you get a chance, two minutes to go on to your platform of choice and leave a review, it'd be amazing. In the meantime, say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>